I'm answering this Cambridge IGCSC paper. It's the Paper 6 Alternative to Practical from June 2021. Many indicators are coloured substances obtained from plants. A student extracted the coloured substances from some berries using the method shown. The berries were crushed. The crushed berries were heated in water to form a coloured solution. The solid was removed from the coloured solution. Name the items of apparatus labelled A, B and C. This is a pestle and a mortar. This is a tripod. And lastly, that's a filter funnel. The student analysed the coloured solution using chromatography, complete the diagram to show where the spot of coloured solution should be placed on the paper and the level of the solvent in the beaker. So we need to place that spot of coloured solution actually on the line. And then the solvent, remember, needs to be slightly below that so that it touches the paper so it can start soaking up, but equally that it's not running straight into the spot. Explain why pencil is used to draw the baseline on the chromatography paper because pencil is insoluble. You don't want it getting itself mixed in with your chromatogram. So you can say it's insoluble or it doesn't run. The student made two chromatograms. After chromatography, one chromatogram was dipped in dilute hydrochloric acid and one was dipped in aqueous sodium hydroxide. The results are shown. Determine the number of coloured substances in the solution obtained from the berries. To do that, you just need to count how many spots there are. Two. The table gives the colours of some indicators in acid and alkali. Use the data in the table and the results to give a possible identity for one indicator in the berries. So we've got red and blue here in the acid. Red and blue. And then in the alkali, we've got blue and green. So where have you got a direct match? It's the anthocyanin. A student investigated the temperature decrease when sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. The student did six experiments. Using a measuring cylinder, 25 centimeters cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid was poured into a conical flask. The initial temperature was measured using a thermometer. One gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate was added at the same time a stop clock was started. The acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate mixture in the conical flask was stirred continuously. The temperature after one minute was measured and the conical flask was, rin was rinsed. In experiment two, we're doubling our mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate. In experiment three, we're tripling it. In experiment four, we've got five times as much six times as much, and then seven times as much. Use the thermometer diagrams to complete the table and calculate the temperature decreases. So let's be super accurate with our readings. That's 25, that's 20, so that reading there must be 22. This one's also 22. Same here. This one is 22.5. This one is 23.0. And lastly, 23.0. Temperature after one minute, got 19 .5, 17.0, 14.5, 13.5, 14.0, and 14.0. The temperature decreased, so 22 minus 19.5 is 2.5. 22 minus 17 is 5. And keep working out those differences. Plot the results from experiments 1 to 6 on the grid. Draw two best fit straight lines through your points. The first straight line should be for the first three points and must pass through the origin. The second straight line should be for the last three points and must be horizontal. Extend your straight lines so they meet each other. Okay, follow these instructions to the T. So for the first three, we've got 2.5, 5 and 7.5. 
and then 999. And then it says the first line should be for the first three points and go through zero. And it says extend them. And here's the second horizontal line. And we've extended here so that they cross. From your graph, determine the temperature decrease and mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate where your two straight lines meet. Include appropriate units in your answer. Show clearly on the grid how you worked out your answer. So let's change color. It needs to be right here. So the temperature decreases around nine. And the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate responsible down here is 3.6. So it's nine degrees Celsius and 3.6 grams. I've included units. Explain why the temperature decrease becomes constant for high masses of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And that's because all the acid has been used up. The investigation was repeated with dilute hydrochloric acid of half the concentration, but the same volume. Sketch on the grid the graph you'd expect to see and label your line D. So in effect, you'd expect to see half the temperature change, which is why our line levels off here, but it occurs at the same rate. And lastly, let's label that line D. Suggest two changes that could be made to the apparatus that would improve the accuracy of the results. For each change, explain why it, improve, why it would improve. So let's be sensible here. We want to prevent heat loss to the surroundings, so we could use a polystyrene cup. And second change, let's be more accurate with our volume measurements, so use a pipette. Why? Because it's more accurate than the aforementioned measuring cylinder. Solid E and solution F were analysed. Tests were done on each substance. About half a solid E was placed in a test tube and heated gently. Steam was given off. Condensation appeared near the mouth of the test tube. The remaining solid E was dissolved in distilled water produced solution E. The solution was divided into four equal portions in three test tubes and a boiling tube. About one centimetre cubed of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of silver nitrate were added. Remember this is the test for the halides, group 7. But no visible change took place. About one centimetre cubed of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate were added and we can see a white precipitate. Excess aqueous ammonia was added to the third portion of solution E and we got a white precipitate. Test 5, aqueous sodium hydroxide was added dropwise and then in excess. And we've got a white precipitate which dissolves. The product from test 5 was warmed gently and any gas given off was tested with damp red litmus paper and the red litmus paper turned blue. State the conclusion that can be made from the observations in test one. This condensation tends to indicate that there's water present. State the conclusion that can be made from observations in test two. We already talked about this. The fact that there's no visible change means that there's no halide ions. Make sure you watch my chemical test video if you're not sure how we're arriving at this answer. Identify the three ions in solid E. So in terms of the three ions, this here, if you've got nitric acid followed by barium nitrate and you get a white precipitate, this is actually a test for sulfate ions. Remember, you can also use barium chloride. Test five, the fact that the sodium hydroxide went added in excess causes the white precipitate to dissolve means that you've got aluminium ions. And then lastly, this gas being given off which turns damp red litmus paper blue, that has to be the ammonium ion because remember the gas given off here is ammonia. So they are SO42- is the sulfate ion, ammonia NH4+, 
Al3 plus is aluminium. Solution F was aqueous sodium hydroxide. Complete the expected observations. A flame test was carried out on solution F. Observations. The fact that we have sodium present. What colour does sodium go in a flame test? Well, either orange or yellow. The remaining solution F was divided into two approximately equal portions and two test tubes. To the first portion of solution F, a few drops of universal indicator solution was added. What would the observations be? Because well, you've got a hydroxyl ion, remember that's a very strongly alkaline solution, so we'd get blue, which indicates a very high pH. To the second portion of solution F, approximately 2 cm cubed of aqueous copper 2 sulfate was added. What observations... Would you see where well, you would see a blue precipitate produced here? What would that blue precipitate be? Well, it would be copper hydroxide. Question four. Dilute hydrochloric acid reacts with calcium carbonate to make carbon dioxide gas. The apparatus shown in the diagram can be used to follow the progress of the reaction. The carbon dioxide gas leaves the flask, causing the mass to decrease. Plan an investigation using the apparatus shown to find out how the temperature of dilute hydrochloric acid affects the rate of reaction. Your plan should include how your results will show how the temperature of the dilute hydrochloric acid affects the rate of reaction. You are provided with dilute hydrochloric acid, calcium carbonate and common laboratory apparatus. So let's sort this out in terms of our variables. So our independent variable, what we're changing... I will use a range of temperatures. What are we measuring? Well, we know we're measuring the loss of mass over a particular time frame, e.g. one minute. What are our control variables? So what are we keeping the same? Starting mass of calcium carbonate, the surface area of the calcium carbonate, so whether it's chips or powdered limestone, for example, the volume and concentration of hydrochloric acid. Remember, we need to repeat and calculate an average. And then how are we actually going to show this information to prove how the temperature of the hydrochloric acid affects the rate of reaction? Well, you want to plot a graph of change in mass in grams on the y-axis against temperature on the x-axis.